This session is called Machine Learning Hyperhero. Um, a little bit of, you know, why did I call it Hyperhero? Uh, with emerging technologies, I'm sure if you're all technology professionals, um, you get pinged about what's hot in the market, the, the Gartner hype curve. Um, so this is a little discussion about our journey, our story of machine learning, um, and did it live up to its hype? And then were Joel and I heroes when we implemented uh, some machine learning. So we'll, we'll take you through that. A um, little quick, um, what we're going to talk about. I'll try to skip through some of the, the bio stuff as quickly as possible. We're going to go through three real use cases where we implemented machine learning. Um, I'm not going to tell you how we did. You guys get to vote on if you think we were successful or not. So based on my description of, of machine learning. So try to make it a little bit interactive. All right? So who am I? Who's Joel Smith? So um, my name is Jeff Kaitowski. Um, I am the Director of Business Intelligence and Project Management for USF Holland, and that may seem like an odd combo. But um, USF Holland a few years ago started a journey of doing some Lean Six Sigma work, very metric, data-driven kind of stuff. Um, so that's why I wear that hat. And then on top of that, um, business intelligence was a nice fit to go along with that. Um, so as we become and more mature as a data-driven organization. Uh, Joel Smith is here. He's my data scientist. We do have just one data scientist. We don't have teams of data scientists uh, or folks, so we'll go ahead and go through that. Joel is just wrapping up his biostatistics, right, degree from Grand Valley on the other side of the state. We're on the other side of the state, so we're on the west side. So let's see some people. Who's from, anybody from here from Holland or Grand Rapids? Grand Rapids? Okay, cool. <coughs> All right, so Holland, I'll go into what Holland does real quick. Hopefully you've seen our trucks. Uh, around in this area. So from a technology stack perspective, we're a Microsoft shop. So SQL Server on the back end, but more importantly, um, we love O365 or Office 365. So oh, you're shaking now that you don't like O365. So I love it, right? Um, was introduced to it three or four years ago. Um, like the SharePoint, Flow, Power Apps, all the cool stuff that Microsoft continues to push out. So I'm a big fan of Microsoft. I wasn't five or 10 years ago, but now I am. Power BI, um, wouldn't it be fun to have a Power BI Tableau and click kind of face off <laughs> at some point? When, is there, who's a click person here? Who's Tableau? Are there more hands with Tableau? All right, who's Power BI? Oh, okay, all right. So uh, I've become a Power BI fan um, if people were here five years ago, I presented on Click and Click View and some things. So, and I've, I've used Tableau in both. So, had a flavor for that. Um, previous life, I was, I used to work with this woman over here, young lady, um, at Johnson Controls. So, an automotive uh, over in Holland. So, I was the manager of the Enterprise Data Warehouse Group um, back then, 10, 15 years ago. And I think it's fascinating how much things have changed um, from a data warehouse, data analytics. I'm not even sure what it's called anymore. Is it called data analytics or business intelligence, data warehouse? So all the different pieces of that. Um, so that was when we did star schemas and big ETL, Oracle shop, and then we overlaid uh, business objects and Cognos on top of that. Um, I did that for a number of years and I switched over to another division within Johnson Controls called building efficiency. So this building, this Marriott facility is run by uh, a building automation system, a bunch of air handlers, coolers, things like that. So it was my job to bring all that data into a central repository and then do some analytics on it and do some streaming analytics. And so one of the cool stories was um, we actually implemented our solution over in Germany for a gas station company. And so if you went to pull something out of the cooler at a gas station and you held that door open for longer than 15 minutes, we would know. So, and back then they didn't call it IoT. I mean, and they didn't call it big data at that point. So this was kind of pre all of that time frame. So that's when I was here about five years ago and presented on Click and ClickView and some things like that. Okay, so yeah, I've had experience with Click, Tableau, business objects. Uh, enough about that stuff. Oh, you know what? I forgot to start my clock. Has anybody got the time on this? Um, so what's hot? Does anybody, does those trucks look familiar? That's kind of, I love, I love looking at the trucks, but I have four boys, and so they think it's cool that I work for this kind of company. <laughs> so, um, 
But what do we do? So uh, USF Holland is an LTL, less than truckload company. Um, what that means is we go to businesses and pick up stuff, right? So we don't fill our trucks up from one customer. We basically go and pick up smaller loads. So if you want to deliver uh, six big engines, you call us. On the next stop, we may pick up bolts. We may pick up um, cabinets that are going to be delivered somewhere. So we kind of pick up a bunch of stuff, and then we go and deliver it. Only reason I mention this is it kind of plays into our story about machine learning and why do we need machine learning and what does it do for us. Um, this is what I think is cool too. So our footprint. Um, so we're a big company, 1.6 billion or 1.1 billion. I think that's kind of cool and big. Um, 8,000 employees. We are spread across, you can see the map, um, 53 different locations. We have other companies on the West Coast and East Coast that are sister companies. We do some have affiliates in uh, Canada as well. And then we have a company that goes coast to coast as well. So we have 30,000 something employees kind of coast to coast doing this sort of thing. Um, the other thing that's cool is 300 million miles. I asked you yesterday, how many times is that to the moon and back or something like that? 600 times to the moon and back. And then we had one driver, one driver, 3 million miles of safe driving miles. Safe driving miles, 3 million. And that was how many times to the moon? Like six times to the moon and back or something like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, this plays into our story a lot. The last two bullets, weight per shipment and average transit days. Um, so it's telling you that one point or 1,600 pounds. So again, kind of not small packages, but again, we're kind of packing our trucks with a bunch of different smaller packages. And then um, I like this on the bottom, we make next day happen, right? So it's our job to pick something up and the next day get it delivered, okay? So our average transit time is 1.3 days. Again, that'll play a little bit into our story as we talk about what we did for <coughs> machine learning. Um, let me ask a couple, who's done a machine learning project so far? A couple, all right, a few? Okay, um, who's from? I mean, who's familiar with machine learning? Or kind of okay, gotta work, raise your hands. Okay, um, I didn't. I wasn't gonna talk a about the specifics of uh, what machine learning is, but we'll we can tailor it as we go through. Um, so these are all the same size box. I was out talking to Kai earlier about machine learning. If you've done a machine learning project, I don't know if this was your experience, but for ours, that number two could be massive. Okay, I'm getting, yeah, getting some either laughs or, this was a huge learning for us. I mean, huge, and Joel can attest to it. Um, I have a joke later on. I must have said the words, shape the data, clean the data. What does that data mean? I mean, a thousand times through the course of our kind of machine learning journey. Um, but number one, you get the data. Makes it look easy, right? I mean, a lot of times it's not that easy getting the data. Uh, number two, cleaning the data. Um, that, again, we can talk about the complexities of that and even the terms. When we go through one of our projects, right, and again, I just talked to Kai. I mean, I have to interpret or tell Joel what are we looking for, what's the variable we're looking for, what does that mean from a business perspective? Um, how do you shape it into the right columns and everything else? So we'll get into that. Three, train the model. Uh, again, I'm not a statistical guy. Joel could kind of define for you what train the model means, but you run it through an algorithm. You kind of are looking for a conclusion at that point of what you want to solve, so you train the model. Um, you then test the data, so run it through. And then number five, they had to improve. I don't know if improve the model or improve the process that you're trying to do. So that is, that is you know, machine learning at 50,000 feet, so there's no detail behind that. Okay, uh, Gartner hype cycle, or if you, so people are familiar with this, I see a nod here. Not a lot of nods, some nods. Okay, so Gartner, every year, across different technology stacks, kind of ranks where different technologies are. So there's supply chain, and ERP, and probably CRM, and all sorts of that stuff. So in this case, they have the emerging technologies, right? And that's part of the expression of what I said about the hype cycle. So, there's my dot. So technology trigger, it goes to a peak. Um, augmented reality was there a few years ago, maybe three, four, five years ago. Um, it hits this trough, right? You're like, oh wow, that did not work out the way I thought it was gonna be. Or 
the articles you get, right? I must get how many articles a week on machine learning? It's like it's the next, you know, if you do this, it's nirvana. You'll never have to do anything ever again. In HR, too, there's a ton in HR, and I, I'm not sure why, because that seems like one of the hardest areas to do machine learning on. Um, so it comes down here to this trough, comes up here, and then plateau. So I thought this was fascinating. Um, so I went back in time and looked at where was machine learning a few years ago in 2015. Um, they had it as a dot right here. So that area right there. And it said two to five years from a plateau perspective. And so I did experiment with machine learning three years ago. So that's right around that time frame. And I would still say it was peak of inflated. I don't think people understood how to do a machine learning project at that point, right? So if I have time, I'll tell a funny story of a bunch of data scientists came in and tried to tell us something and the data was all wrong. Um, the interesting thing is 2017, it was still about the same spot in two to five years out. So um, I looked in 2018 and people, if you have, I mean, can look. I couldn't find it in 2018. Did, you're nodding, I don't know if you, but I saw it under, they call it deep learning, but I didn't see it anymore on the curve. So I don't know if it vanished or what happened or I didn't Google the right thing. So it's been interesting, it's been staying there. Um, for us, let's see, where would I put it? Um, it depended on the project, it could go across all one, I mean all those different, we had one that hit plateau. So I'll, I'll kind of give you an idea and skip ahead a little bit. We had one that did, did achieve what we thought it was gonna achieve, so. Okay. You can read this real quick. So, <laughs> is anybody timing me? So, 10 minutes, you all too, how, how long have I been doing this? Has Joel got the clock on me? About 12 minutes, so two minutes, everybody tuned out. I asked my wife this, I said, you know, after 10 minutes, she's like, oh yeah, I, I stopped paying attention, so I'm not, so I must not be that entertaining. Um, I thought this was fascinating. What it talked about, I, I don't know if they did machine learning, right? Cognitive scientists did something here. So it said that to be, to keep your attention, uh, I have to do a demo, be a character. I don't, I'm not sure what that means. Um, what was the other? Demo, character, oh, ask questions or ask for interactivity. So <coughs> I will say that if, if you've done machine learning and want to share the story, feel free, please. I'll try to get through this so we can talk about that. Because I've sat in these conferences before and, and try to get value out of them. And a lot of times it's, you know, the people you're sitting next to where you can get some value. And I'll try to be more entertaining than, than 10 minutes. Okay, um, here's our story. So we did machine learning for three real, they weren't just tests, they weren't just pilot, they were three real projects and three business problems that we faced as an organization at USF Holland. So one of them is called outbound tonnage, and that's why I kind of talk about what we do as a business and the variability that we see. Um, one is called outbound trader utilization, um, and then one is called customer churn. Um, and I learned a lot about churn the last six months as we've been working on this one. Um, you see a picture of Azure machine learning. So, oh, here's the other part about the 10 minutes and demonstrations. For those of you who have done machine learning, or there's not much to demo. It's not real. I said, Joel, do you want to demo like our studio? And it's not, there's nothing really cool about it. I mean, <laughs> like Click or Tableau or Power BI, you can show kind of interact, but for, you know, it runs an algorithm and spits out. You'll see, I'll go into the Azure one and write the, the coefficient thing. I mean, it just isn't that cool. I mean, unless you're maybe a statistician or something like that. Um, so outbound tonnage, trailer utilization, customer churn. So you, I'll, I'll try to be as impartial as I can as I tell the stories. And then at the end, you can say, you know, did these really, were these successful or not? All right. So I'll try to keep your attention more than 10 minutes. All right. <coughs> like what, what is outbound tonnage? Um, so the business problem is how much weight will we ship each night? It says from location to location. It's really from terminal to terminal. Um, so the coolest thing about our business from a data person perspective is we move things 24 hours, right? And so if you want to test something, you don't have to wait like three months. Like if you're in a supply chain, you got a three month lead time, is that gonna work or something? I mean, once you punch it in, within three or four days, we're seeing if it's working or not. 
So that's the cool thing about the business that we're in. So how does it work and how does our business work? So um, this may sound weird, but on Monday mornings, we start with step one. So uh, our guys are on there in the Detroit terminal and they pack everything in their trailers and away they go. And the first thing they do, they go deliver, okay? So again, we talk route optimization, all the other fun stuff with machine learning and predictive, but they go out and they start delivering. Um, and then they start to pick up. And this is where outbound tonnage comes into play. The more we know about how much we're picking up, the size of it and where it's gonna go, the better we can plan what's called our outbound operation. So which is step three on there. Um, do you, are you keeping a clock on me? I wanna make sure, sorry. I'm at 15, oh, okay, that's 15 minutes. Okay, so, um, so you would think pickup's pretty easy, right? Customer calls in, says I have a thousand pounds, one skid. Cool, I can do the math on that. Why the heck do you guys need machine learning, right? Well, we like to think that's the perfect world, but a lot of times a customer will call and say, I have two skids and it's 2,000 pounds. Cool. We get there and it's four skids and it's 10,000 pounds. And it's five o'clock at night or in the afternoon and our guys head back to the terminal at six o'clock. Well, that throws your planning off. Or, here's the other one, um, hey, I have a package, come and pick it up. Okay, we'll be there. Well, and that's the business we're in though. We, we're like, okay, we'll be there. So the driver may get there, it may turn out to be 10 skids and 20,000 pounds, that's almost half a trailer. In the later in the night, right, that it goes, the harder for it is, the harder it is for us to plan. Because what happens is they hit outbound, this is our, our, our at night shift, they pack everything in, and back to that picture about the uh, outbound trailer utilization. They pack everything in, then we move it from terminal to terminal at night. And then the next morning, they unload it and pack it again and start step number one. And so the more we know about what we're shipping as the day progresses, the day progresses, you know, our, util our trailers, our people, um, our cut times, when do I have to leave? So this seemed like a pretty simple math exercise. So predict, kind of predict if our customer is gonna order, what's it gonna be? You got a 53 foot trailer by X feet, just do some simple math, Joel, boom, we got it. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> okay, so um, here's what we did. So in this case, um, I put the mistakes up there. So, so this is the good and bad about technology and where it's come from. 10 years ago, um, they wouldn't let me near a business objects report. I mean, they wouldn't let me write ETL, they wouldn't let me do anything. A perva can attest to that. Now, I can go into Azure and I can do whatever I want. I mean, it's great, kind of, right? Because you just go to YouTube, watch a video, and like, I'm doing machine learning. I'm a data scientist, <laughs> right? I don't need to get a degree, do I, Joel? I'm boom, right? So here's what it looks like, right? I really did do it. All right. So there it is. Um, 1025 of 2017. So I went out to Azure, uh, did a flat file. Um, I ran it through two different algorithms. <laughs> I'm not a data scientist, right? Um, it, let's see, linear regression, who knows what linear regression is? Oh, okay, more than me. Um, and then we ran it through, I, I love the boosted decision tree one, right? Boosted decision tree, all right, how did I do? Let's see what happened. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. We just did machine learning. I did machine learning. I should get like another title, shouldn't I? Director of machine learning or something like that, or data scientist. Um, so the left one, as Joel and I was describing it to me, uh, was a linear regression, and I'm told the right one's pretty good, isn't it? It's, pretty, it's on that slope, right? It's, I'm supposed to be close to one. And so uh, ran it through machine learning. Now, I'm kind of oversimplifying the story a little bit, um, going back to our number two box, that two of data, holy cow, was that painful. Oh, my goodness. So, um, and then feature engineering, is that a term people are, you're nodding? So, um, I think I started with all of our order data, 
we don't have a lot. I mean, 30 million rows. Um, so really, it's not a lot of data anymore. Ran it through, and I mean, you are churning through column after column. Does that make sense? How do I aggregate that? I ran it through so many times, and then you get this weird number, and then um, you're like, well, why is that? Um, so then I had to put in holidays and then days of the week. Uh, it's fun, I mean, if you like that stuff, but it's also painful, and then you're working with the business. This is where these projects get tough. You're working the w with the business to say, what does that mean, or is that column important? Or, or And so um, a lot of churn with the business, but at the end of the day, that's what I ended up with. 0.87 coefficient of determination. The cool thing about Azure too, right? You put it out there, you feed the data on a web service, and away you go. So that was one of our projects. Now later on, I'll talk about lessons learned as we go through here. All right, second one. Um, I'm kind of a technology geek too, so I really like this stuff. So. Outbound trailer utilization. So at night, I talked about we want to jam pack the trailers as full as we can. Get them, stack them. We don't want to damage anything, so I want to be clear there. Uh, we don't want to damage it, but we want to fill them as full as we can. So um, what we were doing prior to this going in, to this potentially going in, is uh, we had a manual process. So outbound supervisor, we look at the trailer, and he'd say 20 feet. He'd go to the next one. Uh, that's, that's 10 feet. Um, yeah, that one, oh, that's pretty full. That's, that's two feet. So that was the process. Pretty flawed, right? Because, we, I, I mean, it just was arbitrary. And if they felt like putting 30 feet, it was 30 feet. If they put, like, five feet, they put five feet. So we're like, oh, we'll fix that. We got this. You're going to write it down and take a picture. So, oh, five feet, take a picture. Oh, 10 feet, take a picture. So we did that. So, and that's cool. But you need someone going through, I mean, how many pictures at night to see if they were right. And so um, I have to say the digital uh, pictures and the way they can be interrogated these days is phenomenal. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. Does anybody have Google Photo on their, on their phone? It took, so I have all my photos in there. And I have four, I have four boys, by the way. 13-year-old um, is my oldest. It can do his face down to when he was one. It's, it's, abs it's the cool, it's kind of creepy, but it's like the coolest thing in the world if you want to do like a photo album. The only reason I mention that is this technology is available out in Azure. So you can feed it a picture, train it, model it, and it'll tell you basically, we, we train it to tell us how many feet are left on our trailer. And so, and you can, uh, I'll show another picture here. Um, of what this looks like. And you can imagine, well, you, you don't know our terminals very well, but um, dark, dingy, um, it's cold. Our terminals that are not heated terminals, and you got a supervisor sitting there trying to get a straight picture or something, right? It was phenomenal. I, I mean, I can't tell you, I, I, I don't want to oversell technology. This is one. We're from a technology perspective. You, yeah, I know if you're all in technology, right, you've all seen these demo. Are there any vendors in here? <laughs> <laughs> right, you go up, you get a demo, and you're like, oh, this is, this is gonna work. In a week, you'll be a hero, and it's, it's gonna be. This was one of those. I, it's, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years in technology. It's rare, maybe it's just me, that the technology lives up to its billing. But so we, we um, train the model, so we fed it a bunch of pictures. We told it how many feet each picture represented. Um, it couldn't have been more than 150 pictures. Did they identify the other supervisor before, or did they have to go to the label to say? Now I got to the label. No, if you um, if you look real, oh, I kind of got the the thing here. What's my time? Ten for, oh my goodness, we are way behind. Um, so you see those little bars right there, or those little panels? That kind of tells you how many feet are left. And so we had um, one of our outbound people take a look at the pictures, the ones that were kind of even bad, and train the model on how it was going to work. And so, yeah? Did you ever 
We do, right. One of the things that we like to do is direct load or head load, right? And so if you're gonna stop at two locations, you want the one that you're gonna stop at first in the back and then the one in the front to be what's called a head load. Um, so this is real, I, I mean, there's not much more to show than this. I, there's, again, there's not anything cool from a machine learning perspective. I could run the algorithm and just spit out probabilities, but um, only for you know, statisticians is that cool. So that was the other one we did. Um, this one was fun too. For, we were just trying to get close to see how we, from a close perspective, um, you know, we thought about damage or load bars or other things. It, it can, it's amazing <laughs> what it can do. I can tell you that. You can train it with very few pictures. And again, I'm not trying to oversell Azure at this point. Uh, I'm sure AWS or Google has the same thing, but it, it was pretty cool. We have weight restrictions on what we can load. And so some of the picture, it made sense if the truck was only half full, that there was a weight based on that. That's being recorded though in our freight management system. So this is all we're trying to track is, are we doing a good job filling those up? And so the challenge is, right, the supervisor may have not been that accurate. And so we're just trying to make sure that, and we have an algorithm, another algorithm that runs about our routing and so we're trying to make sure that that kind of matched that routing algorithm as well, that we're doing it right. <coughs> oh, that one's up there. Churn. I have to be honest, I think when we started churn, um, I didn't know what churn, I, I mean, what churn was, right? And, it's and this is one of the problems with, with uh, machine learning or predictive analytics. Um, what's the definition? I mean, is churn that the customer is no longer ordering? or the customer 10% less ordering? And then what's our frequency? Is it over the course of a month, a day? I mean, what is that? Um, so I'll talk about lessons learned. So um, nothing cool here to show in terms of R, so I apologize. We could throw R Studio up on the screen to show you that. Um, but we used R, R, R Studio to do this one. Um, boosted decision tree, XG or not XG? XG, XG boosted. Um, and if I forget, we did use Data Robot for a couple things. So anybody using Data Robot? No Data Robot folks? Okay, Data Robot is, I'll be a little commercial for Data Robot. Are they here? Are they outside at all? Oh, someone's nodding. Okay, it is kind of cool. Um, you can feed it some data and Joel's nodding and it will tell you what algorithm to use. Again, if you're not a statistician, uh, I mean, doesn't mean much, but uh, the cool thing is we ran it through Data Robot and R, and Joel got the he got the same answer as R or, or Data Robot. So um, that's how that one shook out. So I, yeah, he should right. But I did the first one. I didn't even have. I mean, I just went to YouTube. I, <laughs> YouTube is horrible. So um, all right. So we used Boosted Decision Tree from a learning algorithm. Um, Joel, if you do have statistical questions uh, about it, ask him. We did run it through a few other algorithms. Um, and yeah, this one's been kind of cool as well. So that's about all the detail I can give about that one. I could show you Power BI, how we plotted the data in Power BI, but again, that's, that's not cool. Okay, um, let's see. One of these, I love this, the data cleaning cartoon. So just tell you how geeky I am, I googled machine learning cartoons just so for the presentation. All right, so one of these we, we completely knocked out of the park. This is being used in production every day uh, and we're seeing results from it. One of them, I called it semi-production, a baseball guy. So um, you know the Tigers use machine learning, did you know that? And Wit does that? Are the Tigers here? Anybody from the Tigers? So, so I thought that was so cool. Um, Base it, maybe a double, not bad. And then um, one is completely struck out. Not, not, not for any particular reason, but it just didn't ever go into production. Okay, so um, show of hands. Who thinks uh, the one I did is in production? Wow, that is no confidence. <laughs> that is no confidence at all. Wow, YouTube did not live up to billing. Um, the custom vision API. Okay, more, who, who doesn't care, right? Um, so we're way past the 10 minutes. Uh, what about the RStudio one? 
Joel, man, they don't trust you either. Did I oversell the picture one? Is that why? All right, that is the one we did. That is the one that, I, I mean, and there's reasons why, right? Maybe because Joel or I weren't involved in those. Is that why? Is there, is there, that hurts. You guys didn't think. Um, <coughs> so the trailer utilization one is live in production using Azure. We're pinging it all the time, um, and it's working great. And we're going to tweak and tune it and continue to use it uh, in our industry. Um, churn, that's got a, in 11 o'clock, wow, I got to fly. Um, I want to kind of hit on churn because that kind of hits all the different pieces of that. Um, we are using it. We've done a lot with it. Um, that one probably is, I don't want to say prototypical machine learning. The trailer one was, it surprisingly had all the elements of being a good machine learning one is from a simplicity perspective. Churn was on the opposite spectrum. And the outbound tonnage, um, we'll talk about. All right. So what did we learn? Um, and if people who've done machine learning have found something different, uh, please pipe in and, and, and raise your hand to this. So um, find a good business partner. It, this is like all IT projects, right? You need a good business partner. Uh, you need someone to kind of willing to talk to you about what you're trying to accomplish and be really iterative. You know, I guess, you know, think about IT projects, that's pretty typical of what you're trying to do. Um, boy, this one, you're like, well, what? what are you trying to predict? That's easy. But think about churn. So we went through multiple iterations of what it meant from a churn perspective. So if you have a customer that orders only once every three months, is that a churn if you don't see them in three months? Uh, what about a customer who orders once a week versus a customer who's ordering three times a week? And what if your dollar value goes down, but the number of orders they're placing changes? And so both on the outbound tonnage one and on the, the um, customer churn one, we spent a lot of time here. And so that would be one thing that if you're going to embark on a machine learning one, can you define what you're trying to predict? And is it pretty easy to define it? And again, going back to the business partner, because I think I've talked to Wit a couple times, we've kind of iterated through on some of these. You go to a customer and they say, I want to do machine learning. And you're like, well, what are you trying to do? And there's one time, I think when I was naive about machine learning, I said, just throw a bunch of data in there and see what comes out. Well, nothing. I mean, I didn't know what I was trying to look for at that point. So that didn't work real well. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> so so real, I, I think, I, are there data scientists here? Were there a couple? Okay. I, I'm not trying to be, I, I mean, Joel and I get a good chuckle out of this now. I, coefficients, uh, predictions, um, when I'm like, Joel, what does this mean? He'll say it, and I'll say, I'm going to say it back, and you tell me if I'm right or not. I, I mean, it's just a whole different kind of language in terms of what you're talking about. Um, there was one, I can't remember, we were like 80% positive that our prediction was 92% accurate. <laughs> I'm like, what? What do I tell a customer? And he, the customer's on the phone with us, so our, our, our sales guys, and you can, you can just tell their, their expressions like, who am I dealing with right now? What are these guys talking about? Um, this, is, this is only Jeff's personal, probably. I, I like to just do technology, and then I run to somebody I'm like, hey, check this out. And so in this one, <laughs> we, did, we did, okay, why are we losing customers? And it was like, because we ship late, which obviously, or no, 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 we said it's not because we ship late. And that's what the data said. So it's got to be right. So I, like, I run to my boss, and I'm like, Dan, you're, you're wrong. I mean, I, we got, it's not because we're late. He's like, you're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. You have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I went back to Joel and I said, what's going on? Are we, are we wrong? He's like, oh, yeah, we're wrong. I, we, I ran something wrong. And so I was so happy. Even on the outbound tonnage one, right, it was the same kind of thing is that you, you run it through and you're like, oh, it's giving me some math here, so it must be right. It's telling me something, and it, it wasn't right. And so a um, lot of iteration. I mean, just tons and tons of iteration. And then... Um, I don't know, some people, data, data, data. I mean, I've talked to other people who have done machine learning projects and kind of somewhat validate this. I mean, step two, you cannot, I mean, spend enough time there. It is, it just takes forever, forever to get the data right. So I'm not trying to discourage you, but, but here's a trait or skill. Again, I know, I think you're a data scientist. Um, 
So we've been trying to get our data scientists, Joel, or even myself and some of our other folks, to learn kind of the whole stack. So to learn the data, the business side of the data, along with the statistical piece, along with some of the presentation layer piece. And so there's more context when you go through the conversation. Because me trying to interpret to Joel or Joel trying to interpret to me, at that point it's breaking down. And so there's, and, and I would say there's a ramp up. Now you said you're a data scientist. Did you, ex am I, you're right, what, did you raise your hand? Are you experiencing the same thing or not? Uh, not to put you on the spot, right? You're like, I never asked for this. Like yeah. Yeah, right, right. Right. Yeah, that's, that's well put, right? So that's what we were doing as well. And then when we're talking about churn, uh, I'll go through it. So, all right. So, what happened out about tonnage? Um, I tried to highlight some things. Um, find a good business partner. The business partner was lukewarm to the idea. And you'd think, ah, it'd be great. I mean, they, but they had day jobs, they were doing other stuff. And so I'd go up to them and ask them about the data. And they were somewhat interested in it. Um, what are you trying? Now, in this one, it was really clear what we were predicting. The cool thing, this was just straight math. Terminal, terminal, how much weight? I mean, that was kind of the easy part of this one. Um, what are you talking, what percentage accurate did we need? Um, we debated this one for a while because mathematically they could do a five week moving average and get pretty close. And so in that one, I had to get pretty high up there from a prediction perspective to make it worthwhile for them to do it. So, and even though I talked about our business a little facetiously about being unpredictable, we do have a pattern and seasonal pattern to customers ordering. So we had to bump it from like 87% up to 95%. And that, you're really squeezing the numbers at that point to get that level of accuracy. Um, Way too early. So in this one, I, it kind of phrases, um, again, the term feature engineering, is that a formal phrase? Okay, she's nodding. So um, taking the columns in, taking the columns out is something we were, it, we did that with customer churn uh, a whole bunch of times. I, I mean, and then what does claim mean? What does the claim ratio mean? What, um, so you churn through that quite a bit. Um, data. So, um, Getting the data on this one at the right time was also a challenge, right? You gotta get with your data teams, get it extracted, get it moved up to a point where it's consumable and then do something with it. Um, Cause we were trying to do this in near real time cause we wanted to know by like three in the afternoon what we're gonna have at night. So that was another challenge that we had on that one. It wasn't because I did the algorithm. So it had nothing to do with it. All right, so Trailer capacity, this had, I, th this one, I, I oversold it, that's why everybody voted for it, but um, good business partner, there was really no change in the process. I mean, that was a great, we made it easier for everybody. So they were doing it manual, they were doing a picture, they still took the picture, but they forgot about it after that. And so that one was real easy. Um, again, this one was, well, how many feet, right? So there wasn't a lot of challenges with is it claims ratio or what the outbound time? I mean, it was real simple and clean what we're trying to do. Um, <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of what are you talking about. So this one was, you know, take the picture, interrogate it. Is it 5, 10, 15 feet? Hit, click, and go. Uh, technology worked great, and then the data was simple. And I'm speeding up a little bit because I have seven minutes, and I want to get to customer churn. Okay. This one is another funny cartoon, right? If you torture the data long enough, I mean, we, we, <laughs> we pound on this and continue to pound on this data. Um, and this just boggles us a little bit. We just ran a test the other day on this one. And, and uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't believe the results, which is kind of funny, right? Because it says right there, we can predict 82%. We're 82% positive this customer is going to go one way or the other. Um, but then when we plot the data over, it doesn't match. And I'm like, Joel, what are we doing wrong? I mean, how can this be wrong? Um, so what are you trying to predict? This one, I think I have a slide on this one, don't I? Yeah. Um, so what are you trying to predict? So um, we ran into the issue of what, what customer are we trying to figure out that we're going to lose? 
And so we want a customer that's consistently ordering at a handling units and dollar perspective. We ran one of the algorithms and what we didn't do, so back to um, what she said about getting the data. So we had to filter out all the people that only ordered once a month or ordered once a year. And we had to take all of that out and clean all of that data. But it was, it was through iteration that you kind of find it. And so, oh, the other thing was, did I have this on here? Oh, what is churn? So this was the other really bad idea. Um, so the sales team keeps an uh, Excel spreadsheet of who churned. Boy, how accurate do we think that was? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not real accurate. So we were using that. And we were way off. We're like, holy cow, we're not even close. We're not even in the ballpark. Um, and then it kind of dawns on you, well, there's sales rep. Wait, I don't know, there's sales people in here? Um, right? <laughs> it's just, it's kind of what, you know, oh, I think I lost it, kind of lost it. Yeah, I lost it. You know, it's been gone for six months. Let me check the box. And so you don't have a good time frame either for when you lost it. And so we had to create our own algorithm for churn, which was fun, I mean, but takes time. Um, so that was kind of interesting. All right, um, yeah, I mean, we, I, I've hit on this a, a thousand times, right? You be prepared, unless it's pretty simple, but I'm not sure anything in our businesses is really that simple, to, to do a lot of homework on the data to begin with. The technology, from either machine learning studio or, or, or machine learning or even from our studio, that I think was the easy part, don't you think? And anybody else who's done this before? The data, whew, man. I mean, that is where the time is spent. Um, and even defining that more. I mean, so as we go through these, we're kicking off a couple more that we're gonna do. I mean, now that we've learned all this, right? We're getting with the business. What are you predicting? Uh, how clean's the data? What's your level of frequency that you need? Um, Oh, and then output to end users. Um, yeah, I mean, all our shows is a couple graphs and charts and coefficients. And so this is kind of neat. We did embed R inside of SQL. And so you can run the R script through SQL uh, and then it spits it out. And so what we're doing is then we, we surface it or show it in Power BI. And so we're showing the prediction against the real trends of what happened. So you kind of visually just give a gut check on what's happening there. All right, three minutes. Um, and that was 10 minutes ago was really far ago. So um, let's see, more important variables. Oh, so this one was interesting. Um, sometimes you don't believe it. I don't believe, I, this is one that's time. So right, we're a next day shipper. And so one of the variables that keeps sticking out, we haven't solved this one, is we deliver too early. <laughs> what? And again, you're on the phone with a customer and you're like, you're, we're delivering too early. That's one of the major variables in what's happening. And they're like, what are you talking about? You're, you're not smart. And so um, that's one of those things that we, we're digging into. And we, did, we, do, we think we figured out what's happening here. Um, so for weekends and other things in different lanes, we're seeing that. But it's a major fact. And so that also, when you're communicating with your customer, that's one of those weird conversations about... You, and you can't describe it, right? You're like, you're shipping too early. All we know is it's not negative or positive. It's just heavily influencing the model. And so you kind of have to work through And that's why we started trending the data to say, what does that mean? So uh, handling units ratio, days between standard and actual. Um, <clears throat> this technology uh, boosted the decision tree when we went through this. We validated that through um, data robot. Um, we did some other stuff on here. Uh, as well, and I'm trying to wrap up because I think I only have two minutes left. Okay, what would I do differently? Um, so if I had a takeaway for you, or, or if you're gonna embark on this, um, and I think you touched on it, you, get, you gotta really dig into the data a lot. Make sure it's clean, make sure you understand what you're trying to do with it. Um, get the right business partner, because you are gonna have those conversations about, you're, I mean, we're showing that if you deliver early, that influences the model, and they're like, what are you talking about? Um, clean, prepare, and manipulate the data. Um, again, you can't, there's tons of time spent on that as well. And then I would say three, four, and five. I mean, that, I don't want to say it's simple. Um, I mean, it's great to have a statistician around to kind of translate the numbers and what they mean and what's happening. Um, but you're going to spend a bulk of your time on one and two. So, um, let's see, one minute to go. I kind of purposely put the easy button up there. Uh, any questions for me or Joel or?
Yes. So on the Azure one and the, the photo one, um, we, they, they send the photo in, we just actually use an API call, and then we write the data back to our freight management system. So for that one, um, it was an Azure web service type of architecture. I'm not sure if I'm answering that question directly. Yeah. Right, it's going in, right, we call it, we run it through the Azure API, and then it spits out the number of feet. And then the customer churn one, um, we thought this was cool, but we embedded the R algorithm in SQL. And so we pass it the data each week to score it. And so we've gone back like six months. Yeah, because we had all the history and we scored every account going back six months. And so every week we rescore them and then we give them a probability score. And so then we, we're trending that probability score and then we look at what they're actually doing from a handling unit and dollar perspective and we're doing that in Power BI. So. Uh, any other questions? Yes. So is this you guys are SQL Server? We are SQL Server. So. What are some of the benefits on your particular language? Are there features available for C or? Uh, for R? Yeah. I, I think so. So, um, yeah, he's not. And then Azure has the, the web service. You can call the web service as well. So for the churn one, our data is on premise though. And so we're trying to figure out how to run it kind of hands off. Um, every week. Anything else? Okay, thanks. I appreciate it, everybody.